Well, we, I'm sitting here with an unbeliever. I mean, this guy, UFOs just don't appeal to him in the least, but I happen to believe in them. I have an open mind. Okay. I that, have an open mind about this. That's encouraging, and I I'm just looking that. for proof. We have a resident expert on the subject who's becoming an expert. He was a disbeliever, too, but now some evidence is proving that that might not be the case. This is Brad Staggs. Hi, Hi Brad. Hi. All right. I'm a resident expert who's finding out he doesn't know anything about <laughs> The more questions you ask and the more answers you find, the more questions you find as well. Uh -huh. That's the problem with this whole situation. UFOs, it's, uh, we've been talking about what a wide, uh, it just encompasses so many things, so many activities that it's difficult to get information on it. It's difficult to find answers. It's one of those what is the meaning of life type questions. Uh, Especially now we're talking about one town today, Brad, right. who seem to have more sightings and more believers around. Exactly. Now yesterday we were at the MUFON convention and the last person we saw there was Carrie Baker, who is the editor uh, of the Rainsville Post, which is a little town next to Fife. And he was talking about some of the strange occurrences in this little southern town in Alabama. And this is that town's account of what may or may not be contact with ex extraterrestrials. This is Fife, Alabama, a small farming community set in the heart of the South, where in the past year and a half, some very strange things have been happening to some very normal people. Ah, uh, Chief, this crowd really looks pretty quiet. Just another bunch of UFO hunters. Uh, you want to check it out for yourself? This film focused on the strange occurrences in Fife as a way of drawing attention to teen drinking and driving. It's been very effective, but for those who've never heard of the tiny southern town, it can be somewhat baffling. Prepare yourself for the truth. It is truly stranger than fiction. Susan Stockman is a reporter for a local newspaper and has been covering the story for nearly a year and a half. It began February the 10th, 1989. I was on a Friday night. Donna Saylor made the initial report. She was the first one to call the police in Fife and say that she had saw something in the sky that she could not identify. We saw this bright light and uh, you know, how you just say, well, what's that over in the sky? And she said, well, it must be a, a street light on a mountain somewhere. I said, you're on the mountain. There's nothing else any higher than us. Well, the further we got closer to it, we just kept watching it. Realized it wasn't moving. And I said, now, when we get one at a good clear spot, we'll stop the car, because sometimes things look like they're not moving when you're moving. And, uh, and it, as we got closer, I said, Kathy, that's right over the tree line, right over to the house. So when we got right here, I said, right there it is. I said, we'll see if this thing's moving. We stopped the car, had the windows rolled down, and was looking straight at it. And then we only got to watch it about 10 more seconds, and it just went out. Donna and her family then used binoculars to watch an object floating in the sky just over the horizon. We all stood out here and watched it probably an hour. And it moved very slowly in that hour. It probably didn't move four inches across the sky in that hour. So we, that's when I went in and called the police department. Yes, ma'am, I sent an officer as soon as I can. Fred West had a call from a lady around Kelly's Chapel, said she saw an object with some lights on it in the sky. She thinks it's a UFO and she needs an officer to come check it out. You got to be kidding. Fife's assistant police chief on duty when Donna Saylor's call came in was understandably skeptical. So the chief walked into the station about that time. I was about to walk out and I asked him if he wanted to go check out a, a UFO sighting. Kind of kidding. And, uh, he said, sure. I told him, I said, I'm serious, we got a call. So we drove down County Road 76 toward Miss Saylor's house, and uh, we saw an object to our, to the south of us. We just stopped on the road. We were still several miles from Don Saylor's. The light glowed brightly and dimmed, and eventually moved off to the southeast. Again, the officers pursued. I don't know what you think it is or was or whatever. After radioing police departments in adjoining communities who confirmed the strange object, the officers turned back toward Fife. They stopped when a nearby police chief called to say that an immense craft was headed their way. We stopped in, this, uh, in a driveway and got out and saw an object coming toward us. It appeared to be an airplane at first. Cut the engine, Junior. The men described the craft as a triangular shape metallic in color with three huge lights illuminating the underside and though it was only 2,000 feet off the ground it made no noise their experience was only the beginning 
We've seen a variety of shapes. Um, my, some of my neighbors have seen them. Um, I have seen them, my husband, my daughter. Uh, sometimes the objects are just like a round ball. Um, we've seen triangular shaped objects and we've seen elongated objects. Susan and a Weekly Post photographer, Terry Baker, captured the strange lights on film one evening. We were at the police station at 5 when someone called in that uh, they had sighted the UFO, so we went to the area where uh, the people had seen the UFO, and we parked the car, and soon after we got the car parked, we saw it. There it is! And I got my camera out and set it up on a tripod. We saw an object that had two, oh, had a red light on each end of it and had a row of blue lights across the middle of it. Terry made a series of pictures, and while some would say they are inconclusive, most would agree the object does not resemble the pattern an airplane would create. Have the mysterious Fife lights affected the small community? Yes, but in a strange, ironic way. It's, it's not a reaction to the object. It's not a reaction to the possibility of alien life. It's a reaction to human beings coming in and uh, making fun. Yes, ma'am. Flying saucers. Uh-huh. Well, thanks for calling, ma'am. We'll check on it for you. Goodbye. This may be Fife, but my name sure ain't Barney. And there's been much more that's been happening in Fife. I tell you, it, they're seeing something down there. Nobody knows what it is. But I also want to take this opportunity to uh, mention that if you've seen something in your town or know people that have, write us a letter. We could be doing more on this. Uh, we'll give you the address at the end of the show. Just put UFO on the outside, and we will make sure that we uh, come out and cover that as well. Thanks. All right. Thank you for being work. here. Mm -hmm. okay. Stay right there, because coming up next, Terry Cousineau. Ashtabula, Ohio, the town of the day, reminiscent of Middle Ages Drawbridge. The Bascule Lift has been in operation since 1925 and was restored in 1986.